Welcome back to another After Work Special. My name is Garrett and this is Mojo Manufacturing. And here we have the fixture all nice and done up and I tapped these two holes and put the pit bull clamps in here and had this uh, piece of stock from that I had left over from when I did the pistol grip shifter knobs and it fits great and it is going nowhere. This is completely awesome how these things work and I just tighten them down with this T-handle. I mean pretty tight but I don't want to strip the threads out of here because that would just suck and I mean it seems like it'll work pretty good. So. I just want to tap the rest of these out and put the pit bull clamps in. So while I tap the rest of these out with this uh, nice hand tap and an uh, 832 tap, I'm going to explain what went wrong during this fixture when I was machining it. And the first thing was I did a helical ramp in to do these pockets and for some reason when I went to do these pockets over here, it didn't like the helical ramp in. For whatever reason, how I selected it in the CAM program, it didn't do the helical ramp in. And I didn't watch the simulation close enough to realize that, hey, this isn't doing the helical ramp in, it's just plunging. So it plunged straight into it as fast as it could with a 3 8 inch in though. And that was the first instance. And the second was just a whole mess of stuff. Uh, I, I wanted to rerun the coolant lines halfway through this because it's so low that it was pulling on the fog buster. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to cut these coolant lines and run them through the back instead of I'm going over top, or I was going over top, and I want to go through the back so I have more, more lines so it's not being pulled as the spindle comes down. And so I did that, and once I, I split the side of the hose so I could get it off the hose barb easier, and I forgot to cut off the part that I split and put it back on the line, and yeah, it's, it was leaking everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And so I stopped the machine, or I, I feed hold, I put on the feed hold, and then I put the RPMs back to zero. So it wasn't running well, and I turned the coolant off, obviously. So did that. And when I came back to the machine to turn it on, I just hit cycle start. I totally forgot to hit RPM 100%, and it was the whole thing was moving, and boom, I broke an end mill because it wasn't turning. What a embarrassing thing to do. So I think that was it. I guess that was a two-in-one, the coolant, and then breaking an end mill. So I probably I think I've broken.
three end mills now in my in my time here with the Tormach. And I think I have one three eighths, one quarter inch. I, I the three eighths I basically just burned up, and the quarter inch I just broke, and then I broke an eighth inch end mill pretty much as soon as I got it. Got the machine that is. So three. I believe maybe more but that's that I mean I guess it's all in experience and if you're wondering why I don't just tap these with the machine and the answer is I don't want to buy one of those uh, tapping heads right now, the tension compression heads or, or whatever they are to, to tap this out using the machine. Uh, first off, it's a little bit scary for me at the moment, and I don't want to spend the money. They're kind of expensive, and I don't really feel like spending the money to, to really buy one right now. And when this is, can be just as, just as fast, probably not in this instance because there's a lot of them, and maybe if I'm just doing one at a time, after like the machine runs apart, then I can do one at a time. It might be a little bit quicker, but I'm okay for now. So this sucker is done, finally. Got all the clamps in there. and the piece of stock should just go right in. And the reason why I have these little dimples, these uh, reliefs right here on this side and not this side is, that is because this is an extended pocket. The whole thing doesn't actually go this length right here, so it might stop pretty even with this face of this pocket. So it won't go all the way, so that's why I don't have those little reliefs right there. Same goes for those top ones as well and it fits pretty tight even without these down so I think that is going to be okay like it's hard for me to get that out of there and I didn't even tighten anything down yet so I'm happy about that that gives me a little bit more uh, relief that this thing might actually work so thanks for watching this one and I'm gonna go right now order some material and next week we should be we should be cutting some short throw shifter kits for for the Ford Fiesta ST from like years 2013 to now basically. Thanks for watching.